Are your plants growing in your aquarium exactly as you had envisaged? Or are they bobbing up and down? And you think, oh well, this plant species doesn't really want to be here, and it isn't growing so well either. What really affects plant growth? Let's think, one thing at a time, how we can get our plants in the aquarium under control. For a start, we have, of course, the light. There are big differences in the lighting. You can use LEDs or T5 and T8 tubes. There are many different options. The first thing you notice with fluorescent tubes is that you can buy a tube for very little money in the supermarket or DIY store. But if you buy a special tube for the aquarium, it costs five to ten times as much. The question is why? This is not just because the tubes you can buy in the supermarket or DIY store were not developed for aquaristics. They can lighten up a room, a bathroom for example, but they do not generate plant growth. Plants have adapted to sunlight through evolution. A proper aquaristics tube for an aquarium generates light similar to sunlight, like the JBL Solar Range, which similar to sunlight offers a full spectrum, and not just a part spectrum, which can only be used to make a room brighter. This is how these differences come about. It is the same with LED lighting. With this lighting we can set color temperatures, daylight, warm light or cold light, and have a very high light output. This is the first point, that plants need to have the right light. The second reason why plants might not grow in your aquarium is the fertilizer. Do you feed fertilizer to your plants? How much fertilizer do you feed them? You probably look in the instructions. 5 milliliters for 20 liters of water, whatever. Every fertilizer will have a dosage recommendation on it. But how can a manufacturer, in this case JBL, know how much fertilizer your aquarium needs exactly? Do you have a few plants? Do you have a lot of plants? Do you have fast-growing plants? Or do you have slow-growing plants? It depends on a lot of factors. The fertilizer recommendation on the bottle is actually only guesswork, a general basic recommendation. You can test this though. If you do an iron test, for example, you can test one of the many minerals present and see how much is actually there. Can I adjust the iron content with the normal dosage to the value I need? Or will I not be able to do this at all? Or do I need perhaps a higher dosage? A further problem that can occur is that water conditioners also remove fertilizer from the water. At JBL we have solved this by chelating the fertilizer, therefore protected it against the water conditioner. With JBL, when using our water conditioner, if we then give it one hour, we can use our fertilizer effectively. I would like to show you how you can tell whether a fertilizer is chelated, therefore protected against the water conditioner, oxygen and other influences. For this purpose, I have used distilled water here. Distilled water doesn't contain any iron, of course, but at least it shouldn't. Now we pour a couple of drops of iron test into this distilled water. The number of drops is not really important, because as soon as iron is present, you can see the color purple. I shake it a little, and we let it stand a while here against a white background. We see that nothing has changed. And that is exactly as it should be, no color change. This distilled water does not contain any iron. Now I take our fertilizer, the ferropol. I open it at the top. A little more so that you can also see it. Now I pour a drop into this glass. And immediately we can see what happens. If the color suddenly changes to purple, the iron in the fertilizer would not be protected. The iron test would react immediately, and a purple color complex would form. 
but this will not happen. The following will happen. I pour in a drop, and you can see that nothing happens. Only now, very slowly, does the color purple appear, and it turns darker and darker. This is now the process of the iron test, gradually breaking open the chelators, the protective casing of the iron, and releasing the color. The moment the iron ion, the loaded iron molecule, is released, it reacts with the iron test and we get this purple color, which turns darker and darker. The iron test releases more and more iron ions and reacts with them to form this color complex. You can see this very nicely here. This means, if you pour a drop of your fertilizer at home into iron test dissolved in distilled water, please do not use different water, you can see this very nicely. If it does not change color at all, you do not have any iron in the fertilizer. This is rarely the case, but can happen. Or if it changes color immediately, you see that this fertilizer is not protected. The iron and the other minerals are not chelated, not encased, and it reacts immediately to create a color complex. If, as is the case here, it changes color slowly, you can see this very nicely here, the iron test is breaking down the chelators and slowly releasing the individual ions. How do you fertilize your plants? Do you use only liquid fertilizer or do you also use root fertilizer? The water plants have, after all, very different structures. We have plants that develop a strong root system. We can imagine that these roots are not developed for nothing. Firstly, the plant uses the roots to hold on, and secondly, to absorb nutrients. It therefore makes sense, if you have plants that are firmly rooted in the soil, to place ferropole root, a root fertilizer, directly into the web of roots. Plants that are not rooted in the soil, for example epiphytes that are placed on wood or stone, take the nutrients and minerals from the water. This means in this case we need more liquid fertilizer and no root fertilizer. So here too we can have different needs. Do we need root fertilizer or liquid fertilizer? Normally we need both in the aquarium. It depends on how you plant your plants. Many make the mistake of taking the plant out of the pot and not removing the rock wool that is still stuck to it. This rock wool should really be picked off using a pair of tweezers or your fingers and thrown away, because it is soaked with fertilizer, and we do not want to have this in the aquarium. It would over-fertilize the aquarium, and this is something we definitely want to avoid. Once we have removed it, the plant is then often pressed into the soil as it is. This too is not very good. You should shorten the roots a little using a pair of scissors. This here is a bunch plant. It is made up of individual plants. You should separate them and then also press them into the soil separately, not all twisted together and planted straight away. Otherwise, the plants impede each other in the growth. The lower leaves take light and nutrients away from the disadvantaged leaves and stems. Please always ensure, therefore, that the plants are pressed into the soil a short distance from each other, a very important point. If you populate an aquarium with just a few fish, perhaps with just a few shrimps, you probably belong to the aquascapers who build landscapes in the aquarium that look like landscapes and habitats on land. Less fish also means, though, that less is fed. This means some substances, such as phosphates and nitrates, which are produced by the reduction of fish excretions, are not present in larger quantity for the water plants. Although these are not nice substances, because they cause algae problems in the aquarium, they are at the same time part of the food plants feed on. Therefore, if we have an aquarium with a lot of plants and few animals, we have to adjust the fertilizer. 
then we are in the area of aquascaping. The normal aquarium fertilizer for a community aquarium does not contain any phosphates or nitrates because these are already present in large quantities in the aquarium, due to the fish, due to the feeding. Now imagine this aquarium without the fish. In this case, we need to add phosphorus or phosphates and nitrogen or nitrates. This is why there are nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium fertilizers, called NPK fertilizers, after the chemical symbols for these elements, for such aquariums. You can also add these substances separately, just nitrogen, just phosphorus or just potassium, depending on what is needed by the aquarium. You can maintain a community aquarium wonderfully using a standard fertilizer. If there are only a few fish, or no fish, just a few shrimps, we should switch to an NPK fertilizer that supplies especially nitrates, phosphates and potassium. Do you have hard or soft water at home? You can measure this with a general hardness test. If you have noticed lime spots around your tap, in the wash basin, in the kitchen or in the bath when cleaning, you probably have very hard water. Water plants generally come from regions with soft water. This means that a higher water hardness alone can affect the growth of your water plants. You do everything right. You have a CO2 system, a nice full-spectrum LED light, add fertilizer, you do everything. But your plants still stagnate. In this case, please check whether the water plants you have chosen tolerate hard water and establish the water hardness. This can be a very important factor. Now, I am going to make you a promise. If you consider the following factors, I can guarantee that your water plants will grow very nicely. Firstly, light. We will start simply from top to bottom, therefore with light. Use an LED light with full spectrum and a high par value, therefore with photosynthetically active radiation. Not any light, but one that really encourages photosynthesis. The JBL LED solar range, for instance. Fluorescent tubes are not necessarily bad. They can equally generate the full spectrum, but have less light output. An LED is brighter, but the light quality of a good full spectrum fluorescent tube is not worse than that of an LED. Secondly, we need to consider the water. If you have a CO2 content in the water that is right for your plants, that is to say between 20 and 30 milligrams per liter, your plants already have enough of their main food source, CO2. But without a CO2 system, this will be nothing though. The normal CO2 content in the water is always too low. With the help of a CO2 system, you can raise the CO2 content in the water, and the plants have something to feed on. Thirdly, minerals and trace elements. CO2 is the main food source for the plants. Just like we humans need vitamins and minerals, plants also need minerals and trace elements. If you add these with a fertilizer such as JBL Ferropol, the plants are provided for perfectly. Fourthly, we are going to go one stage lower, to the roots. If you have water plants which develop roots, they will absorb many nutrients through the roots. It therefore makes sense to use root fertilizer. JBL Ferropol Root is a tablet that contains a lot of nutrients. There are also fertilizer balls, the seven balls. Use something that can be pressed directly into root area and supplies the roots with nutrients. The last factor, the fifth factor, is often forgotten. Make sure that you don't have any plant-eating fish in the aquarium. This sounds obvious, I know, but I don't know how many they number in terms of percent. An unbelievable number of aquarists own long-whiskered catfish. Long-whiskered catfish are easy to look after and very cute. They reproduce with relative ease, great fish. But they turn a beautiful Amazon sword plant very quickly into a lattice leaf. They eat the plants. It is not something we like to hear, but it is true. Therefore, be careful. Check your fish stock once again. If you find holes in the plants, this also may be down to loaches. If the plants have bite marks, you most probably have a fish that eats plants, possibly several. If you consider all of this, your plants will grow. Guaranteed, I promise.